Our previous video, we explored Firebase and Android, and we saw how we can very quickly save data from our phone to a cloud-based Firebase database. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can retrieve objects natively from that database in our Android app. So to start with, we have the database that we used in our previous video. Uh, we have the plant that we put in, Asursus canadensis, and then after that, I have put in another plant. Um, so I'm going to bring up my emulator, and just to show you, we can add yet a third plant, or actually we're calling these a specimen. I'm going to add one, we'll say, just an Acer rubrum, and we'll call this one at uh, Fountain Square, Cincinnati, and we'll say beautiful fall color. And as soon as I hit save, you'll watch the web page in the background will update almost instantaneously. And there we go. I hit save, and you see, sure enough, we get a third specimen now, a beautiful fall color, Fountain Square, Cincinnati. And the way I have this design, I'm not saving the plant name, but we can see there are definitely three distinct entries here. So now what we want to do is we want to retrieve these in the native form. In other words, we want to retrieve them as Java objects, not just as a collection of strings. So currently in the app, if I go to show saved, it goes to an existing page where I was pulling from a local SQLite database on the phone. We don't need to worry about anymore, so this is where we're going to start uh, reading from our Firebase database. That page is called show, uh, uh, sorry, Specimen Show Fragment, and currently what it does is it queries into the um, uh, queries into SQLite. We're going to remove that in just a minute, but first let's wire up to Firebase, and our goal here is to remove these two lines and be able to populate a uh, list adapter that we have with a collection of specimens. Because you see, if you look at this line I just commented out, what we were doing when we were reading from SQLite is we were reading data as a, uh, basically as a specimen, and then we're showing a collection of specimens in a list adapter. That might not make sense right now. Hopefully it will make a bit more sense once we finish the exercise. So to start, I'm going to do it just like we did on GPS a plant, where I'm going to grab Firebase database, get instance, and then get a reference to the database. So just a reminder, Firebase database get instance. This is wiring up to our online Firebase database, and it is using the uh, JSON uh, Google Services JSON that we downloaded in our previous video. That includes the connection information for our Firebase database. So we don't need to specify the name. It already knows what it is. And then database reference, database.getreference, that's giving us a reference to the very top level of our database. So what I'm going to do next then is I'm going to say database reference, and I'm going to say dot child, and then string foo. Now, why am I doing that? Well, if we take a look at our Firebase database, I gave it an initial child of foo. I didn't have to do that, and probably I should have named it something more descriptive, but this is just kind of like a bookshelf where we're going to store each of our specimens. So what I'm saying is navigate down to foo. After we navigate to foo, we want to iterate over each of these individual specimens, pull them out, put them into a collection. Okay. So we get our reference to foo, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this just a little bit. I'm going to say add value event listener, and for the value event listener, um, this is going to inform us anytime the data changes on the Firebase database. We can hook up a value event listener anywhere on this tree, starting from the very top all the way to navigating down anywhere in this tree. We want to do it as low as we can because we don't want to get over notified. In other words, this guy is going to be called every time anybody adds anything to our database. So add value event listener. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. It's looking for something called value event listener, which is an interface. I could make an inner class that looks like this class my, uh, my value event listener implements value event listener 
so an inner class, and then um, I'll enter implement methods, and like so. So we need to wire something like this up right here in this method call that's currently redlining. One option is to create a completely separate inner class. If you're not familiar with inner classes, the syntax there looks a little bit weird. Uh, the other option doesn't look any better, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's a little simpler if we do everything in one piece. So first, let me add a semicolon. If I don't do it now, I'm going to forget. Second, here's the part that gets confusing. I can declare what's called, uh, instead of an inner class like I just showed you, I can declare an anonymous inner class, which is where we simply say new, and then the name of the interface that we want to implement, which is value event listener. And you see it automatically fills in the details for me. So this is very confusing if you're kind of newer to Java because you're seeing all of this happen inside of a method signature. In other words, a parameter that we're passing in to a method call. And what we're doing here is we're just declaring an inner class, or in other words, a class within a class in line and immediately passing that into the method. If what I said over the last two minutes doesn't make sense, don't worry. All you need to worry about is that we have this method called on data change, and this is where we're going to do the heavy lifting. In other words, this method will be invoked anytime, and I'll put some comments to this effect. This method will be invoked anytime the data on the database changes. Additionally, it will be invoked as soon as we connect the listener so that we can get an initial snapshot of the data on the database. So again, if the inner class anonymous inner class, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. Just do it how I've done it here and know that this on data change is the important part. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, we have asked for everything starting with foo which is going to give us this collection of specimens that I've added. So what I want to do is I want to shake hands with each of those specimens. So what I'll do now is I'm going to say data snapshot. Now what's that? Data snapshot is this argument that's getting passed into the method here. And that represents the data at the point in time when this method was called. This method will be called uh, once when we, when we first initialize this inner class. So we're pretty soon after we come into this screen, if you will, we're going to get a snapshot of the data at that point in time. So what I can do is I can say data snapshot dot get children. Get children is going to return to me a reference to each of these guys here. Uh, basically it's going to return this entire unit as a collection. So data snapshot dot get children. Now what in the world do we do with this? Well, that's where some shortcuts are going to come in handy. In Android Studio, I put my cursor on a method, hold Control alt and press V. It's going to inspect that method. It's going to look at what that returns. It will create a variable of the correct type that will hold the return value from this method. So if I know nothing else about the method get children, I just put my cursor on it, hold Control alt v hit Enter, and I see that, it, that in, uh, Android Studio is going to be smart enough to figure out what this returns. It's going to make a variable of that type. It's going to save the return data into that variable. In this case, the variable type is iterable data snapshot. Now, iterable is important because that means it's something we can iterate over. In other words, it is uh, something where we can have a loop. So I'll say get all of the children at this level. Okay, now another um, shake hands with each of them. Another nice shortcut that we have then in IntelliJ is to type for each, create a for each loop, and this will allow us to iterate over a collection like the variable called children that we have here. A collection, anything that implements this interface called iterable. Um, array list, a hash map, a hash set, Anything we can iterate over will go into a for loop. So what I need to do is I need an iteration variable. In other words, each time I shake hands with one of these specimens, I need to save it into a variable. So I'm going to uh, call that um, 
well, let's see, we're going to call it data snapshot. And then we'll just say child. And then after the colon, we put what we're iterating over, which in this case is going to be the collection called children. Okay. And then close parenthesis. At this point, all we know is the language of Firebase, and that is data snapshot. In just a moment, though, we're going to be able to pull these specimens out as native Java objects. So iterate over the collection called children. Each time we shake hands with one of the children, we're going to put it in the variable called child. Okay, almost there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say child dot get value. And this is the important part. Now look at this interesting method signature here. It's a little different than the others. This is really important. What we can do is we can put in a Java class. And watch what happens when we do that. Get value specimen DTO dot class. Okay. Now remember the trick I told you in IntelliJ, Control-Alt-V. Let's try that and see what gets returned from here. A specimen DTO. Okay, now why is that important? That's important because specimen DTO is something that I have invented. It's something that is not uh, specific to Firebase or Android Studio. It represents a plant that I can touch. The other reason why it's important is if we go back to our other video, we saw what we were pushing in at this level was, guess what, an object of type specimen DTO. And this is where Firebase is really cool. You don't have to do a whole lot of mapping from one object to another, as long or one object to a database, as long as that object follows the Java standards and naming conventions. We can save it as a Java object, and we can pull it right back out as that same type of object. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, now we need to add this to this collection of specimens I mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to borrow a little bit of stuff I commented out. I'm going to paste it up above. Okay, this will hold our collection of specimens. Okay, list specimens equals new array list spec uh, specimen. DTO. Let's make that specimen DTO. Okay, that'll be a little bit better. Okay. Um, Alt Enter. So we can import array list. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is uh, down here where we're pulling out the specimen DTO is I'm going to add them to this array list. So what did we call? Sorry, what did I call it? Specimens. That's fine. Specimens. Dot add. Specimen DTO. Okay, one little tricky part. Uh, we have to declare this final. So final list specimen, like so. We're all good. Just a little bit of finagling we have to do because we're dealing with one of these anonymous inner classes. We can only pass final variables into the anonymous inner class, but we still are allowed to call methods on those variables. No problem there. Okay, we're getting a lot closer. Uh, I just need to make one little change here. I'm going to make this also specimen DTO. Okay. And specimen DTO here. Don't worry that it used to be called plant DTO. That's just uh, an example I was doing in a prior video. And suddenly you see red lines go away. I can now save. I'm going to set a couple of breakpoints, one here and one at the top. And... Uh, setting the breakpoints, setting two different breakpoints here is very important because this is not going to be called in a linear fashion. We're going to see it's going to walk through these. It's going to register the value of int listener and then skip all the way down to here. And then uh, it's going to invoke the value of int listener. And that's going to happen later. So it's going to happen a bit out of sequence. Um, as a matter of fact, well, let's just see how it goes. So deploy. I'm going to pause the recording for just a moment. And it didn't take very long to bring the app up. I'm going to go ahead and hit show saved. That's going to take us to this screen where we've been making changes. So I click on show saved. My breakpoint hit. And let's watch very carefully the sequence of events that happens. First, we initialize our collection that's going to hold the specimens. Now we initialize our Firebase database. And note what line I'm on. Let me go ahead and snap on line numbers. 
Okay, I'm on line 38. Now when I choose F8, it's going to execute this line and go to the next line that it can execute. Watch what line it goes to. It jumps all the way down to line 71. In other words, it, it skipped all the guts of this on data change method that I made earlier. That's okay, it's gonna come back to that in just a moment. So F8 and then F9 to continue, tell it to keep running. And guess what? Now we get a callback where we're hearing back from Firebase and it says, oh, by the way, here's all the data that I have for you. As a matter of fact, if I mouse over this in the debugger, we can take a look at, um, we can take a look at the data. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense just yet, but it will in just a moment. So now, F8, we're saying get children. Okay, let's take a look at these children. I mouse over the children. And again, not a whole lot of very useful information just yet, but we will get some more information in just a moment. Here's where it gets really important. We're shaking hands with each of these children. So we have a total of three children. Just a moment. Yeah, no, we're, okay. So we have a total of three children. And those three children, again, they represent each of those three specimens that I have here, a good native edible plant, a wonderful native edible plant, and beautiful fall color. So we're gonna shake hands with each of those, and we're gonna pull them out, F8, as specimen objects directly. No mapping required. We pull them out as specimen objects, and we add them to that collection of specimens that we have declared up above, okay? So if we take a look at specimens here in the debugger, we see, sure enough, Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, a good native edible plant, University of Cincinnati, a wonderful native edible plant, and Fountain Square, Cincinnati, beautiful fall color. Sure enough, it matches exactly with what we have on the Firebase Cloud database. So I choose F9, I choose F9, and let's go back and take a look at the emulator and there we go. One for one, a perfect match between the online database and the data that we have pulled, um, the data that we have pulled onto our phone. So the nice thing about this listener is we can wire up a listener that will hear when anybody else adds data to Firebase, and we can use that to dynamically update the screen. Uh, even if we were to update it from a non-Android device, if we had anything else wired up to this, or if we manually entered some data here, uh, we would see it synchronized very quickly on the screen. In addition, if we're offline, uh, it has some caching capabilities where it can store any data we've added and then synchronize that once we, once we come online. Uh, a lot of really nice things that used to be a lot of manual work. So I hope this has been beneficial, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. I will put uh, the GitHub link in the comments, and additionally, this video is part of a playlist. You can go to my channel and look for the playlist. The playlist is called Android Development with Android Studio. Thank you.